Okay, so uh, there's a couple of ways to look at this problem. One is to look at it as uh, two separate problems. One is another way to look at it as a slightly different problem. I'll start with looking at it as a slightly different problem. So in that case, what we do is we think of this not as a mass with a string pulling on it and a weight on the end of this, but just to kind of disregard this weight here and just think of this as a force pulling this way that has the same weight as that weight. So now there's just a force pulling up this way that is equal to m times g. Now, why is that different? That's different because if we do it the other way, then we think of this as a tension, and then this is a tension, and this tension is connected to the weight, and then the weight is equal to tension, the tension is equal to tension, and so on. But this one turns out, this way just kind of simplifies things so that we only have one, uh, so we only have one object that is have, that has a force applied to it. The only downside to this is that when you go to calculate the acceleration of this object, you have to take into account both of the masses because both masses are accelerating. So you can't just say force equals mass two times acceleration. It has to be force equals mass one plus mass two times acceleration. So let's make sure that we, we know that. Let's write that down right here. Let's say that the force, um, and the, this will be the net force, the total force, has to equal the total mass, which is mass one plus mass two, times acceleration, and we're gonna to need to use this equation when we calculate the acceleration. This is an important equation. We'll, we'll set it apart here just at the beginning so we know not to forget that. So now we're just gonna say that this force that is pulling this way is equal to mass one times gravity. And so now our, our, our object here, this mass two, has these forces acting on it. it. Has force, we'll call this force one, Acting this way, we have uh, we have the we have the weight of this block pulling downward this way. We'll a little later here so we can see it. So this force here is the weight of two equaling m two times g. And uh, they say there's no friction in the system, so there's no other forces. Just this rope pulling it this way, gravity pulling it down this way, and we're done. However, actually, that's not true. We also have a normal force pushing up this way. That normal force looks like that. So those are the four forces, three forces acting on this block. I should rewrite that normal force. So that, and this one needs to be erased here. Let's get rid of this arrow here really quick. Where's my eraser? There it is. And then, uh, so, the, so we'll put this third force this way, which is the normal force pushing up this way. <laughs> so if, if we're, if we're going to be on this incline, we generally do want to rotate our axes. So instead of using X and Y in the horizontal and vertical direction as normal, I'm going to use this perpendicular or parallel direction to the surface and perpendicular direction to the surface as my units, as my uh, coordinates, rather. And you can see here that force one is in the parallel direction and the normal force is in the perpendicular direction, but this weight two is somewhere in between. So it's gonna have two components. We're gonna have a weight this direction. This is gonna be the weight in the parallel direction. And we're gonna have a weight that is pulling it downward this way. This will be the weight in the perpendicular direction. And you can see that this triangle here has an angle that matches up with this angle here down here. This down here is the 35 degree angle. That's this one here. And so the opposite side to that angle is this one here. So this one here is gonna equal the total weight, which is M2 times G times the sine of theta. Because it is opposite the angle theta, which is down here in this triangle. And next to it is this force here that's going to that's gonna hold the block onto the surface. It's gravity that's holding it onto that surface. So this one is equal to weight 2, sorry, m2 times g, that's weight 2, times the cosine of theta. Right? Or theta's in there. 
So now we have components in the parallel and perpendicular direction. And now we can split this problem into a parallel problem and a perpendicular problem, right? Because we have forces in each direction and we add them together to equal force, to equal mass times acceleration on, in each direction. In the, in the uh, perpendicular direction, there is no acceleration. So in other words, the sum of the forces, the net force equals mass times acceleration is gonna equal zero because there's no acceleration in the perpendicular direction. This thing is not jumping up or falling down into this thing. So in other words, the sum of the forces, the net forces in the parallel direction, perpendicular direction rather, has to equal zero. And since we only have two forces, that means they have to be up opposite to each other. In other words, the normal force plus this weight perpendicular force has to equal zero, which means the normal force has to equal that. Mass two times G has to equal that perp perpendicular weight force. Mass two times G times the cosine of theta. So now we know what our normal force is. <laughs> me. And that would be very useful if we knew if there was some friction, because we can use the normal force to calculate friction. However, since we're not doing friction, uh, we're not worried about that. So we go to the parallel part. The parallel part of this problem says that the force one, which is m1 times g, plus the weight parallel has to equal mass times acceleration in the parallel direction. And it turns out there could be some acceleration in that direction, so we have to leave it as some value. And that's that's where we use this equation here. This equation here, these two forces in the parallel direction, force one and weight parallel, have to add together to equal this net force and have to equal m1 plus m2, both of them, because both of them get accelerated by this, by these forces, times the acceleration. So um, we have uh, m1 times g, which our net force is adding these together. We're going to call that direction, we're going to call this direction negative. So we're going to call this in the negative m1 times g plus our weight parallel, which is m2 times g times sine theta. That has to be added together to equal m1 plus m2 times the acceleration. And that is where you calculate your acceleration. We actually can we actually can calculate all of these things. We know all these numbers over here, and we know these numbers, so we can divide by them, and we can calculate our acceleration in the parallel direction, which happens to be the same as the acceleration of this block. Now, <laughs> what is it? How do we determine? Excuse me. How do we determine direction? Well, this will end up with a sign, either positive or negative. If it's positive, then this block M2 is moving this way. This is our positive parallel direction. And if it ends up being negative, then block two is sliding up the hill. And correspondingly, this one will be going down if this one's going negative, and this one will be going up if this one's going positive, so we can figure that out. And that's how you do this problem. They calculate the net force by, your net forces are these two equations, are these two forces added together, that's your net force from this equation. And then your acceleration is also solved from that equation. Now, what else needs to be done here? Acceleration of the block and the direction. So then, then the last part, part C, is to calculate the tension in the string. Well, the tension in the string is, uh, <laughs> excuse me, the tension in the string is something that has to be uh, determined What's a, it has to be determined using the, a different, the different problem, I guess, is what, what you have to say. Um, so one, one way that you can do this is look at this box over here. Let me do a little bit of a erasing. One way to do that problem is to look at, just to look at one of the boxes and and recalculate the forces here. So I would look at, um, let me see here, sorry. Back to here. Yeah, I would look at box one, it'll be simpler because it only has two forces involved. And just look at this system by itself. Don't even think about the other system. This system by itself has two forces on it. It has a tension force upward, which is the thing we're trying to calculate in part C. 
it has a weight force downward, but we know the acceleration. So the weight here is m1 times g. We'll say it's negative. And so now I just add these two forces together and let them equal mass one times acceleration. Because the tension already takes into account mass two. We've, or, we, we, we're going to essentially ignore it and, and assume that the tension is all kind of caught up in that. And then we can calculate uh, the tension force because the tension force being up would be positive and minus m1 times g is the force downward and that has to equal the acceleration of mass one which we know we know the acceleration of mass one because it's the same from that we got from part b we plug that in here and we solve for the tension and that gives us a value for the tension And why do we do it separately? We do that separately because doing it separately is the only way to make the tension not an external, not an internal force. So we have to essentially look at the problem a little bit differently after we've already calculated the acceleration using both masses. So that's where, when we calculated the acceleration using both masses, we get we get uh, the the contribution of the second mass's influence in there. So that's how we get part C. And I think that's it for that one. We will see other problems that are similar to this in the chapter with friction, which is chapter five. And then we will start using this stuff over here, which includes the normal force because that's how we use, that's what we use to calculate friction. So that's that. Uh, if you have any other questions, just contact me.